Good morning, Western Hills family. How are you and anyone else that's watching this devotional? Last few months, we've been having our different members or an elder or a staff member or, or, or somebody from our church to deliver a, a devotional message every morning. Uh, we decided to go a different direction just for the next couple of weeks. We're going to do a, uh, a devotional together. I'll be leading us in that and going to just have a short Bible study, then a couple of questions of reflection. Going to use a book called Building Bridges from Heart to Heart by our good friend Ray Beeson. Uh, Ray Beeson is the father of Gayla Pugh that I know that most of us know. Uh, Brother Ray has been a minister of the gospel for many decades. He's a former military man. He's also an author, Building Bridges from Heart to Heart. You can pick these up in our church atrium if you'd like. Uh, but but Brother Ray is, uh, uses this book, and, and this is what he says. He says, Building bridges from heart to heart is something each can do. It's a labor of love that can become a magnificent obsession. This book is designed to remind us that sometimes the smallest, the simplest acts of thoughtfulness and kindness becomes treasures to those in need. This means we each are rich in the gifts that we have to give. Brother Ray does a great job of, of, of talking, how, talking about how Jesus would build a bridge from heart to heart, how Jesus impacted the lives of people around him. And in chapter one of Building Bridges from Heart to Heart, he talks about the Samaritan woman, uh, the woman at the well. You probably know this very well. It's in John chapter four. And, and I just want to just read a couple of excerpts from the chapter uh, that Brother Ray wrote. Listen to this. He does such a, a great job of telling the story. It was an unusually warm day in a small town of Sicker. She did not choose that hour to go for water. No, she would rather have chosen the cool of early morning when the other women went. Oh, how she yearned for that contact, that association with others. This she missed the most, all the while knowing it probably would never be. She was never accepted by the others. In fact, clearly ostracized by them. She could at least partially understand, but that didn't ease the pain she felt, nor feel the yearning for their friendship. See, the point is, is life's never been easy for this woman at the well. She was a Samaritan woman. She had had multiple husbands in her life. The man that she was living with currently was not her husband. Uh, she was ostracized by society. The women didn't want to be around her. And so here she is going in the middle of the day to get water in a very hot part of the day. She shows up at this well, and lo and behold, here's this Jewish man. Not just a Jewish man, but a Jewish rabbi. Not just a Jewish rabbi, but the Son of God, Jesus. Jesus Christ. There is absolutely no reason for a Jewish man, let alone the rabbi, let alone the son of God, let alone the Messiah, that he should even have a conversation with this woman. But he does. And they begin to have this conversation about worshiping and spirit and truth. And he begins to talk to her about her life and, and changes her life. And Brother Ray continues with the story. And he, and he says this about Jesus. Listen to how Brother Ray puts this. Jesus then uses the gentle technique that will help this sweet daughter of God's creation to see self-value so long buried under the fallen leaves of discouragement. That's a powerful statement. Let's continue. Human value is always there, though often hidden in the shadows of doubt and fear. The scarcity of this precious commodity, commodity has called for the writing of many books and has taken center stage in the drama of men and nations. And so Jesus reaches out to this woman. He knows that she's discouraged. He knows that she's ostracized. And he is willing to take the risk, take the gamble, to roll the dice, to help this woman change her life. And he does it in such a powerful and impactful way. And you know the rest of the story. Jesus confronts her about the husband. She begins, her eyes are open. They begin to talk about deep things. It says there in the text that she actually leaves her water jar behind and goes off into the town. Jesus gives her, gives her the gospel, gives her the good news. She takes it with her, takes it back home, and begins to tell everyone about Jesus. Brother Ray concludes his chapter with this. I have often wondered of the first impression she made as she came back into town, saying, come and see. But they all followed her, men who had laughed at her, women who had shunned her, a town that was ashamed of her. They all followed her, and she led them to Jesus. Building bridges, heart to heart, bottom line, Jesus can use anyone. 
does not matter your past, doesn't matter what you're doing right now. Jesus can reach out, touch your life, change your life, cause you to drop the water pot that you once carried, that symbol of shame, that symbol of guilt, cause you to drop it right where you're at and go and make an impact in the lives of people that are around you. That's what Jesus can do. So I'm going to leave you with just two questions. I'll also provide these questions in the text of the Facebook message that we'll put out. But here are the two questions. If you don't mind, uh, respond to these questions in the comments in the Facebook posts, and that way we can have some dialogue. Question number one, uh, what do you think it meant when she left her water pot by the well? Oh, what does that mean? What did that signify? What's the water pot that she's leaving? Or is that just a part of the text? It's just a, just a detail that we don't really know. But why did John include that? It's an odd part to put in there. She left her water pot by the well. What does that mean? Question number two. How can we improve our outreach to our hometown? It's very important. It's called evangelism. Spreading the good news, seeking the lost, telling people about Jesus, going to the needy, telling them, telling them that the hope that you have. What can you do? What can we do? What can our church do? Hope you have a great day. God bless you. We will see you later.